Hey, Pickens Chemistry. So I wanted to share a few other poems with you um, so that you had some other styles in mind that you could choose to use. And so um, for your atomic or chemistry poem, as I said, uh, you could write a haiku and I'll show you an example of that. You could write a four line stanza and I can also show you some examples of that. And what I have on the screen right now are limericks. And so most limericks are going to follow a rhyming scheme sort of like this. Most limericks are gonna have a certain number of syllables on each line, um, but that can also vary a little bit. There's not necessarily any strict requirement for these, but um, some of these are some of the funnier ones that I've seen over time. And um, I thought I would share them with you. The favorite one that I have is this one on the bottom left. And I do want to apologize. These unfortunately are on an old transparency. And so some of the light you see there is actually the lights from the ceiling reflecting off the transparency. But I think it's still pretty visible. So this one is probably one of my favorite ones. There was a young lady called Harris that nothing could ever embarrass till the bath salts one day in the tub where she lay turned out to be plaster of Paris. And so if you look here, there was a young lady, that's six, called Harris, so a total of nine syllables, that nothing could ever embarrass, another nine syllables, that nothing could ever embarrass, that's actually 10, nine, 10, there was a young lady called Harris that nothing could ever embarrass till the bath salts one day, six, in the tub where she lay, six, turned out to be plaster of Paris, so 10. So did I miss one up here? There was a young lady called Harris. Yeah, I missed one. So this is 10, 10, 6, 6, 10 in terms of numbers of syllables. And if you look at what's rhyming, the first and the second line rhyme, the third and the fourth lines rhyme, and the fifth line rhymes with the first two. So you might call this an A, A, B, B, A rhyming scheme, okay? You can see some of these other ones that are here that are kind of funny. Um, the Hoover, I'm allergic to cats, so this one's another fun one for me. The Hoover in grim silence sat, but sucking no more at the mat. Quietly it grunted as slowly it shunted and messily disgorged the cat. And um, limericks tend to be a little bit funny, sometimes uh, not necessarily appropriate for work or school. Um, here's one actually. It's really small, but I'll read it. Um, and this is a limerick. And in particular, it was meant to be quirky and non-rhyming, non designed to catch the reader off guard. There was an old man of St. B's who was horribly stung by a wasp. When they said, does it hurt? He replied, no, it doesn't. It's a good job it wasn't a hornet. So literally nothing here rhymes, okay? But this one overall, doesn't necessarily follow the typical pattern, okay? So if you do a limerick, you want it to rhyme, it needs to have something like 10, 10, 6, 6, 10 syllables on the five lines. And generally it would follow an A, A, B, B, A rhyming scheme. Haiku would in English typically be three lines. These are some haiku that came from Avatar The Last Airbender, the episode called Tales, Tales of Ba Sing Se. Um, through, all the night, through all the long night, winter moon glows with bright love, sleet with silver tears. And um, then one of the characters comes in as he hears that, stumbles in, I am so sorry, something struck me in the rear, I just wound up here, which worked as a haiku. And then in the episode, this is a little bit funny because there's a little bit of a back and forth between these two characters. Five, seven, then five syllables mark a haiku, remarkable oaf. And so this is funny because 
this is how a haiku would be constructed is five syllables in the first line, seven in the second, and then five in the third. In Japanese, they don't normally write these in three lines. It's normally one single line that could be cut into three as we do it. Um, and then of course they continue on and you can see um, what they go through and do. And then the last one here from the character, he messes up because he has five syllables in the first line, then seven in the second, and then six in the third. And so then in the episode, it's funny because then he gets kicked out of where he sees the people doing the haiku. Right in the middle here is an example of a stanza. This is actually a single stanza from another one of Robert Frost's poems called Accidentally on Purpose. The universe is but the thing of things, the things but balls all going round in rings, some of them mighty huge, some mighty tiny, all of them radiant and shiny. And again, you'll notice this one actually does have rhyming. So it's an AABB rhyming scheme this is not required. If you were writing a longer poem with several, several stanzas, then you might do more of this. So here's Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening with multiple stanzas. It's an A, A, B, A, okay? No, though, here, snow. And then here rhymes with queer, near, and year. So this is A, A, B, A. B, B, C, B, and then lake rhymes with shake, mistake, flake. So C, C, D, C, and the sweep then rhymes with all of these words, deep, keep, and sleep. And so A, A, B, A, B, B, C, B, C, C, D, C, D, 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 for a longer poem with multiple stanzas. All I've asked you to do is write one stanza or one haiku, or one limerick. Finally, the last example, this would be if you really wanna kinda of go all out and get some bonus points or something like that, would be a sonnet. Um, if you have not seen, um, Patrick Stewart has actually been on Twitter for the past several months reading Shakespeare's sonnets. Um, I have not actually checked those out myself. I've just seen them come up in my Twitter feed. So this one is a particular sonnet from this Edmund Spencer. Um, it's a particular ste particularly steamy ha -ha, um, sonnet. And it kind of throws you for a little bit of a loop because Shakespeare's sonnets um, typically do a lot of flattering of his subject. And as you read this one, my love is like to ice and I to fire. So he's saying that his, his love is cold to him. How comes it then that this her cold so great is not dissolved through my so hot desire, but harder grows the more I her entreat. And so he's saying that why can't he break through her icy exterior? Or how comes it that my exceeding heat is not delayed by her heart frozen cold, but that I burn much more in boiling sweat and feel my flames augmented manifold. What more miraculous thing may be told that fire which all things melts should harden ice and ice which is congealed with senseless cold should kindle fire by what by wonderful device. Such is the power of love and gentle mind that it can alter all the course of kind. And so he's writing about someone he loves, but she doesn't recognize him or she doesn't acknowledge his love and she becomes even colder to him the more he desires her. Um, and so this also has a rhyming scheme. There's fire and desire, great and entreat, or great and entreat, would, depending on how you kind of read those. So A, B, A, B. Okay, and then here's 
or no, wait, so fire, great, desire, and treat, okay? So A, B, A, C, kind of, C, D for cold, and then sweat, which might be kind of like, I don't know, sweet, sweet heat, um, doesn't exactly rhyme, does it? Heat, cold, fold, and then there's told, ice, cold, ice, eind, eind. So I think it's supposed to be A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, D, E, D, E, F, F, in this case. And there could be other rhyming schemes, okay? And then if you remember from sonnets from uh, English class or something like that, there's the iambic pentameter. So my love, my love is like to ice and I to fire where you're having this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten syllables, but they're paired up. So the pentameter is five and the iambic is putting the emphasis on the syllable. It's putting the emphasis on the syllable that's in the second position on the line. My love is like to ice and I to fire. How comes it then that this her cold so great Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, okay, and so with sonnets, that's typically the rule for sonnets. They are 14 lines with that A B A B C D C D A B A B B C B C C D C D E E rhyming scheme. Okay, um, and 10 syllables per line. So. You have all these different choices for poems that you can use. If you have other questions, if you have another style of poem you'd like to do, please feel free.